Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it's time to do the second part of the uh, helicopters video for the South Africans and uh, I had a great time uh, with the guys just sitting down and talking about this stuff. This was recorded quite a long time ago, um, basically just because uh, I wanted to release it at a specific time. So as always, I would like to thank the guys behind the South African Tech Tree Project. It's always a pleasure talking to them about different vehicles and also just to let you know that we have recorded the aviation portion. It is quite long and is going to need quite a lot of editing but don't worry about it. It'll be out at some point. So as always, if you want to talk to these guys or get part of a pretty cool community, which is based around the South African tech trees, there will be a link in the description. Make sure to go along and uh, have a chat with everybody. They're all very friendly and I've had great times just sitting down and chatting to them uh, as not just about, you know, uh, vehicle stuff, but also other stuff as well. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Firstly, I would like to give a shout out to Plain Encyclopedia, who will be publishing my article on the Roy Falk uh, Mark I combat support helicopter in the first week of March this, this year. Be sure to visit the page and give them a like. The Roy Falk or Red Kestrel combat support helicopter is considered by many as one of the most advanced weapon systems produced by South African defense industry. Designed and developed for the hot and high, humid and dusty southern African battle space based on the lessons learned during the South African border war to operate in a high intensity conventional war. Development With the South African border war operations shifting from a defensive to a more offensive nature for South African defense force and the increase of enemy main battle tanks in the theater, the need for a dedicated attack helicopter capable of defeating enemy armor became paramount. South Africa also became subject to the United Nations Security Council Resolution 418 on, on November 1977, which imposed an arms embargo. This isolation would lead to South Africa having to develop an attack helicopter as none could be sourced internationally. The Atlas Aircraft Corporation, a division of Armaments Corporation of South Africa or Armscore, not only provided support for South African Air Force aircraft, but also gained significant experience upgrading the South African Air Force Mirage 3s in the 1970s. A project study was undertaken to come up with a workable configuration in 1976 to 1978, which placed Atlas in the position to make a helicopter industrialization program. The requirements for an attack helicopter included survival and high threat regime, Commonality with existing medium transport helicopter fleet, which include, which consisted of the Oryx and the Puma. Quick response to the mission task, day and night operation, low pilot workload, a very accurate navigation suit, simple in the field maintenance and an operational lifespan of 30 years. The ability to come quickly under existing army command control and communication systems. We are operable in operational windows of between 5 and 15 meters above the terrain for 95% of its lifetime. Long endurance capability, ability to ferry great distances and be built within the existing industrial infrastructure of South Africa. The future attack helicopter would place speed and maneuverability above protection to fulfill the primary objective of mission success with maximum survival chance for both crew and aircraft. When the requirements for an attack helicopter came to light, funds were made available to the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research to conduct a feasibility study. I will hand over to Rattle to take the discussion further. So this is the Helicopter 3 for the South African Tech 3, which we are proposing. South Africa has a lot of unique helicopters in its line, which you will see. Um, I will be focusing now at the moment for rank 5, the XH1 Alpha. Now, the XH1, XH1 Alpha is, you can put it South Africa's first attempt to see if they really can make an attack helicopter. During the 1980s, South Africa saw the need for an, South Africa saw the need for a, an attack helicopter which can defeat enemy armor which is 
gets way past the capability of their own armor to defeat. That's why South Africa decided to start developing their own attack helicopters. And so thus became the board. Oh, what? Eh. Thus was the birth of the XH1 Alpha. The XH1 Alpha was basically a test bed to see if it is possible for South African industry or its economy and for its weapon systems or its capability to produce and maintain such a helicopter. The XH1 Alpha is uh, operated by a crew of two. It has a max take of weight by 2000 of 2200 and 2200 kilograms. It can go up to speed a maximum speed of 210 kilometers per hour. And it has an offensive armament of 120 millimeter Victor GA cannon. Now, the G, the, the Alpha has unfortunately no pylons for no rockets and no bombs. The only armament which it has is the 20 millimeter mounted at the nose. My opinion, this will make it very interesting for people to grind and in some aspects, a little bit painful. Um, but I think where once you are done grinding this thing and you get to the next helicopter, you will start having a lot of fun. The next helicopter for rank six, is the XTP-1 Beta. Now, it goes by a different couple of, it goes by different names. One is the XTP-1 Beta, one is the Puma J-2. This is the Pacific, the, there were two variants which Africa produced, one housing the weapon systems and one housing just avionics and the electronics which, uh, the electronics which operates the weapon systems but the J and that was the j1 the j1 never had the weapon systems the rockets and the guns guns itself the j2 did the j2 which you can see is basically a, just a normal puma the french utility helicopter which africa converted into an attack helicopter it is operated by a crew of two a pilot and a weapons officer it had a max take of weight of 7,400 kilograms and a top speed of 294 kilometers per hour. It has an offensive armament of 120 millimeter Victor GA cannon, which is barely mounted. And it has suspended armaments varying from 72, 68 millimeter rockets to V3B air to air missiles and eight ZT-3 ATGMs. One thing to note with the Beta is that it housed a helmet sight, which is basically a helmet sight that works when the pilot, the, uh, the weapons officer, looks to the left. The 20 millimeter cannon at the bottom will look to the left as well. The Beta and Alpha are both test bits which were to see if it was possible for South Africa to create uh, an attack helicopter, which is one of the best in the world, which we will get to later. The Pieta had a payload capacity of almost 4,000 pounds, uh, ordnance capacity of 4,000 pounds which is exactly 1,779 kilograms and 3,922 pounds. It had a maximum hover ceiling of 12,000 feet and it could uh, take different roles such as anti-armor, uh, troop transport, reconnaissance, self-defense, area suppression, etc., etc. It was South Africa's first and which you will see later of attempt to make an attack helicopter or turn a utility helicopter into a full-fledged attack helicopter which must be feared and respected on the battlefield. So next up we have the Super 17. It was a modernization project done by the South African Paramount Group 
we took a MI-17 and just improved its offensive capability um, by mounting a lot of South African um, military technology onto it. It includes the Makopa ATGM as well as the Ingwe ATGM. It could also mount 23mm gun parts and it also had full cockpit uh, night vision conversions. It included uh, the installation of composite blades and brand new air filters. It also had high powered thermals and TV detection and tracking. Then, next up we have the Azar. The Azar was um, a South African slash Polish um, defense project. So it was done um, in combination with the Polish military. It was a PZL W3 so-called Polish helicopter. And we installed South African weaponry onto it. This include our a 20 millimeter GA1 cannon, um, slave to a Kentron helmet site. So the same system that is on the Roy cut. So wherever the gunner looks with his helmet, the cannon turns. It also had the option to mount eight CT3 Ingwe laser beam riding anti tank missiles, or 68 or 70 millimeter rocket pods. One was built in 1993 in South Africa, and it was tested and it was quite successful. Unfortunately, the project never went further because a country who has better political ties with Poland uh, got the project, so the project was cancelled of South Africa. The South African Azars or W3 so-called would have been designated as W3K or W3WB, and uh, yeah. I'll now pass over to Blue. I'll be talking about the MI-24 Superhind, uh, the a a AS-550 Flash, as well as the MI-24A. Okay. So, the MI-24 Superhind. Uh, the, M- the Superhind Mark III is an upgrade of the MI-24 Superhind developed in South Africa. Um, in the 1990s, ATE developed an upgrade package for existing MI-24 combat helicopters aimed at improving their armament, avionics, countermeasures, and performance. Various upgrade packages were developed with the Mark III acquired by Algeria and the Mark IV by Azerbaijan. Design. The Superhind combines modern South African weapon systems and avionics with existing MI-24 airframes. Performance is increased by weight reduction. The Superhind is not produced as a new aircraft, but an upgrade applied to existing airframes. Firepower. The gun armament is placed, is replaced by a 20 mm Victor F2 autocannon in a new chin turret with the external ammunition storage. The chin turret with front-mounted sight unit is the most recognizable external upgrade. Anti-tank capability on the Mark III is improved by fitting the long-range laser-guided ZT-3 Ingwe anti-tank missile. Alternatively, the Mark IV is equipped with a Ukrainian Breya anti-tank missile. The users. The Superhind Mark III was acquired by Algeria with the first of 34 upgraded aircraft operational in 2001. Azerbaijan acquired the Mark IV upgrade for 10 aircraft, which are designed as, um, designated as MI-24Gs. ATE Super High Upgrade Configuration proposed by South Africa. Um, the Chen turret, the GI, the Giat Industries 20mm M693 F2 is a dual feed cannon which fires standard 20 by 139mm ammunition. It is gas operated with the firing mode can be selected for single shots, bursts or safe. The gas system operates via two vents, one on each side of the barrel through which the propellant gases can push against two pistons. The gun is locked by two swinging swinging locking devices which act as struts between the gun body and the gun block. On firing the two gas pistons 
are driven to the rear, moving the struts backwards and so allowing the breech block to move to the rear. In this way, all the firing forces are developed along the barrel center line to keep accuracy constant. 8 times Ingwer laser guided tandem warhead anti tank missiles. Um, the Ingwer employs semi active laser guidance. The target is illuminated by a spot from the laser designator which the missile alternatively seeks. The system has the advantages of being invulnerable to radio jamming and or interference. None of the flight limitations imposed by wire guidance and ability to launch platform to remain completely behind cover without having to expose itself. The effective range of the Ingwe is 5 kilometers, which is considerably longer than any wire guided tow variant this is likely resulted from a combination of eliminating the guidance cable and installation of a more powerful rocket motor. Propulsion is by a single stage solid fuel rocket motor. The quality, the quantity and composition of the fuel is classified by but likely co to contain organic chemical compounds. At least three warheads have been developed for the Ingwe. The original ZT-3A missile had a shaped charge warhead rated to penetrate 650 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor, while the improved ZT-3B has a tandem shaped uh, warhead that is rated to penetrate 1000 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor. After ERA, a new type of warhead unveiled at the IDEX 2013 exposition, DAB, the MPP multi-purpose penetrator has been developed for use against light armor and material targets. But the MPP has apparently not been adopted yet. Uh, slight technical data about this warhead. Um, it is as a missile mass of uh, 28.5 kilograms. A uh, penetration of up to 1,000 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor and a range of 5 kilometers. The Superhine can maintain the ability to operate up to 16 anti tank missiles that can be 86 spiral or 9K114 Sturm with a range of 6 kilometers guided by radio, as well as uh, 89 spiral 2 9M120 attacker 5s as well with a six kilometer um, distance guided as well by radio. Uh, the HMD automatically detects the cannon to where the co-pilot gunner is looking and can be equipped with an integrated night vision goggles and an HUD heads up display that provides navigation information that allows the flight map of the earth NOE with low flight profile following the low altitude. Using the masking of the ground, hiding behind the imperfections of the earth, therefore minimizing um, its possibility to be detected by radar. The engine, the Kilmov of TV3117, is a turboshaft engine family intended to provide power to medium rotary wing aircraft. The engine firmly provides maximum power a takeoff between 1,800 and 2,200 shaft horsepower. Uh, max power at cruise is 1,500 shaft horsepower. Um, max power at takeoff is 2,000 shaft horsepower. Okay, um, the crew, it is two crew members with pilots seated above and behind the gunner, uh, plus two door gunners engine. The Kilmore 1500 horsepower engine. It is 2800 kilograms in empty weight and it can go up to 26,455 kilograms of max loadout. Maximum speed is about 279 kilometers per hour with a range of 1000 kilometers. The MI-24 Superhine features integrated avionics packages, night vision compatible cockpit, Doppler GPS navigation, redu reduced vibration, stabilized nose-mounted sensor, 
Sight package featuring forward-looking infrared cameras, rangefinder and TV camera, optional dual-feed 20mm cannon in steerable chin turret, day and night heads-up display, flight, flight data record. The armament. The Ingwe anti-tank missiles I've already covered. Um, I won't cover them again. Uh, I'm moving on now to the MI-24A. Um, not as exciting as the MI-24 Super Hind because it, uh, we used it as our test bed to see what would work and what wouldn't and then proceeding on to the MI-24 Super Hind. The general uh, characteristics is as it is in-game with the MI-24 that we did um, acquire. Um, the short history is the MI-24A was originally donated to the museum by ATE in 2001 and restored for static display. It was on display for about two years before being dismantled and sent back to ATE for possible restoration back to flying condition. This was abandoned to the, due to the high cost involved and was stored at their facility until late last year when it returned to Swartkop in dismantled condition. Incidentally, it was used as a prop in the movie Lord of War and funds from this were used in the aborted rebuild. It was reassembled and repainted by the museum, having been painted temporarily in European theater colors for the film and subsequently stepped down to bare metal and painted in primer, as seen in the museum's display. It is highly unlikely to ever fly again due to the high constraints. However, the um, basic weaponry of this could have consisted of a machine gun 1 times a 12.7 millimeter uh, rockets of up to 64 S5 57 millimeter and uh, four Falanga ATGMs, as well as um, the uh, Yak B 12.7 millimeter machine gun. Um, not too exciting on this helicopter. However, it is uh, we do we did have it and uh, we did perform experiments with weapons on this on this test bed. The next aircraft I'll be talking about is the AS-550 Flash, a light aerial vehicle capable of high-speed attacks. The basic Flash weapons kit will comprise of 70mm rockets and 12.7mm cannon pods, but this can be expanded to 20mm cannon pods and guided weapons. The AS-550 Fennec demonstrator is fitted with a helmet-mounted display electro optical turret mission display gps receiver as well as a plethora of weapons various arm and armament options are available such as the fm rmp gun pod 12 tube rocket launchers 20 millimeter cannon pods thales fc unguided rockets thales fc unguided ingwe anti-tank missiles Flash was preceded by the standalone weapon system, weapons kit, which was jointly designed, developed, manufactured, and supported by Eurocopter and Ad Advanced Technologies and Engineering, ATE. The package featured a Belgium FN Herstel HMP 400 uh, 12.7 machine gun, a French Nexter NC621 20mm cannon, FC-233 70mm rocket pods by Belgium and Danel's Ingwe anti-tank missile. Lastly, we are going to look at the premium helicopter rank 7, which is the XTM Royfalk's Royfalk XC-30. This was uh, still a developmental model, um, which was fitted with a 30mm XC-30. Um, and it retained the same armaments as discussed previously in the video, which included the 68mm rockets, the V3B air-to-air -air missiles, and the ZT-3 Ingwe anti-tank missiles. I'd like to thank BRFC, Swollen Ostrich, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Conte Baraka, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Lafouche, 
Barine and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.